So I was uh, thinking the other day about some of the films that I've been working on during the last you know, year, year and a half, specifically the films that I made uh, during the lockdowns uh, in 2020. And as I was thinking about this and, and sort of the approach that I took to making them and how it changed a lot of my thinking about filmmaking, I wanted to uh, put the question out to the, the, the filmmaking community uh, of what have you been working on the pa you know, during the, the past year, year and a half? What were you working on during 2020 when everything uh, shut down? Um, and also not just what were you working on, but how were you working? How did you find ways to continue making films when maybe you weren't able to get together with collaborators in certain cases or weren't able to go to certain locations or whatever restrictions you may have been dealing with? I was thinking about this question for myself, and I'll, I'll uh, sort of give my own experience first here. So the first thing that I want to mention is before the lockdowns began last year, and this was back in um, January of 2020, I made a short film called Unknown Number, which is available on my other YouTube channel. I can, I can link to it here. Um, now, Unknown Number was an idea that I had had, I actually had written with a friend of mine several years earlier, I think maybe about five years earlier. And this was a production that took me a while to get together. It was a little bit more um, involved than, you know, some of the some of the smaller projects I'd worked on. It was still a short film. It was fairly simple. It takes place in one location. But there was a lot of uh, planning that went in, involved in uh, getting a lot of the a lot of the shots that were needed, and I won't get into the whole backstory of that right now. But I, I, I'm just mentioning that because it gets at something that separated this project, uh, the unknown number project, out from what I was doing during the rest of 2020 and into 2021. Now, unknown number almost didn't get made, and the reason for that is that I wanted to make a film that I could. Uh, Basically, I, I wanted to, to, to put some extra money into it, to put some extra time into it, and to have something that I could try to, if not necessarily show at festivals, uh, that I could use as a kind of a calling card short, something that could really show off, you know, what I was capable of doing. And the problem with this was that I, I didn't really get a response. I, you know, re reached out to a videographer and never heard anything back. And as always, you know, with my with my uh, uh, projects, you know, I had to really be mindful of the money that I was spending and things like that. And it got to the point where because of the, you know, the, 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 the lack of response and everything, I almost uh, put it on hold. But then I decided, well, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and make it anyway. And I, you know, I, I used what I had and, and got the film made. Now, the reason I mention that, though, is that this situation that I found myself in with Unknown Number was kind of repeating a lot of the same frustrations and headaches that I had been dealing with over the last several years in making my short films. Um, some of these were, you know, a lot of these were when I lived in New York for a while, and then, um, so I, I was dealing with a lot of these little, um, you know, these, these obstacles every single time out of the gate trying to make a movie. And it was causing me a lot of frustration and frankly, taking a lot of the joy out of the process for me. So after, um, so I made an unknown number. I was very, you know, pleased with how it turned out, especially given that, you know, I, I'd had to, uh, you know, given, given some of the compromises that had to be made, I was very pleased with how it turned out. Now, what, what I was going to, uh, what I'm getting at with this is that after that experience of making that movie, that was in January, and then of course in the, uh, well, March, I guess, you know, everything kind of shut down. And one of the first thoughts I had is, okay, now, you know, I'm going to have to find ways to continue making films where I may not have access to the locations I want to get into, or may not have anybody else that I can work with, or whatever. So, um... In addition to those kinds of restrictions, I was also thinking back to the to the headaches that I had dealt with, with unknown number and you know several previous short films I'd made before that. 
And this gave me this idea of trying to tackle uh, short projects that could be done in what I call down and dirty filmmaking. All right? and, and when I say, what, and I, I call it that because it's a very stripped down, uh, simplified kind of approach to making the movie. In fact, when I, so when I started making some of the films in lockdown, uh, the first idea that I had was a an ultra short, you know, micro micro movie called Scared to Death, which was a very simple situation of a woman walking around, a, a, you know, kind of a dark neighborhood at night being followed by an unseen presence. And for me, the fun of a movie like this is it's a very simple idea and it allows you to uh, play with a lot of the genre conventions and techniques that you would see in, in, in this case, like a, a horror film, but to do it on an extremely small scale and just to really just to have fun with it. And I like that. I like the kind of experimentation that that approach can lend itself to because you're, you're not working with a lot of, you know, you're not on a really tight budget or a really tight schedule or, uh, there, there's not a lot there's not a lot kind of hanging over your head as far as what you need to do. So it becomes almost like a kind of uh, a playful or uh, a fun way of making a movie. So using this idea, I decided to shoot it with a, uh, this was uh, before I had my current Google Pixel smartphone, uh, I decided to shoot it with my Canon still camera, digital camera that has a video function on it and worked very well in low light because I actually shot it outdoors at night, like under street lamps and things. So um, I, I just, I, you know, I took this approach of, it, for me, it was like a very a conscious way of looking back at how I used to make films when I very start, very first started making them back when I was a kid, you know, and, and you know, taking this very kind of casual approach to it. Um, and what I found in doing this was it's a different kind of filmmaking than what I did with Unknown Number, right? It's, it's, it's definitely a lot more kind of freewheeling, off the cuff, improvisatory, but I had a lot more fun with it. And that's what I took away from that experience of making movies differently um, in the, you know, during the lockdowns. And it also allowed me to work a lot, a lot, a lot more uh, and, and more quickly. You know, I did, uh, I'm trying to think of some of the other ones I did last summer. There was Isolation, which is a story about a man kind of coping with, with isolation during a, during a lockdown. I did, um, there was Scared to Death 2, which was another kind of, which was a sequel kind of playing off the same ideas as the first one. There was Scarcity, which was a kind of a dark comedy set during a lockdown. I did uh, Lights Out, which was a thriller and uh, The Call, which was a short kind of a comedy sketch. But my point is that all these movies that I was able to do, I was able to do them very quickly, very, very cheaply, with minimal gear, with minimal people, and it allowed me to just kind of get these ideas out, you know. So what I, what I learned from this experience, and what I, what I really have taken away from it, is that I was when I was tackling the, the slightly larger projects there for a while, uh, kind of culminating with unknown number, that I was hitting these frustrations again and again uh, because I kept running into the limitations of, of trying to make films on that scale. And what I also found was that the process of making the smaller films was a lot more fun for me. And I do think it's important to have fun with filmmaking. If you're not doing it, if, if, you're, if you're like me, you're not doing it for money. You know, I, I release all, pretty much all of my films with the exception of, uh, of, of one uh, that, that I have distributed. The others, I've all, you know, been putting them all up for free on YouTube. Um, you know, I'm not making them with any real, uh, you know, there's really no, no, no purpose beyond doing them for myself and, you know, just trying out different ideas that I want to try and to learn from, from making each one. And I actually felt like even though Scared to Death was such a simple, small, kind of off-the-cuff type of project, I actually learned a lot from it. And not just in terms of making the film, 
but what I wanted to what what I wanted to get out of making the films, it kind of reminded me a little bit. I think it it kind of um, brought it back for me what I wanted to get out of this process. And I realized that by trying to tackle these these uh, larger projects where I was always just kind of falling short with the resources that I had. I realized that I did not enjoy that because I kept hitting these, you know, same frustrations and compromises. Now that's not to say that I don't want to tackle more, uh, tackle bigger projects or tackle a more ambitious film. As I mentioned in another video, um, I'm actually working on a feature length project right now, but here's the thing. I'm taking what I learned from making these, as I call them, down and dirty films, uh, I'm taking what I learned from making films that way and applying it to making a feature length project. And in a very kind of an interesting way, it was by making those really small, off the cuff, simple micro movies that showed me, I think, or clarified for me how I could do it on a bigger scale. Now, I've also mentioned, of course, that I have been inspired by a lot of the films that I've, the feature films I've seen here on YouTube. And I've talked about those in other videos. I, I don't want to overlook that. I think that was a very important part of getting me uh, thinking about how I could um, make a feature like this. And uh, so that that's a big part of it too. But uh, the, the, these uh, small films that I was making kind of helped, I think it helped me to be a more resourceful filmmaker. I, I think it helped me to realize that uh, when you keep hitting these frustrations, sometimes you just you kind of have to look at that. And even if you, even if you are able to get around these obstacles eventually, you kind of have to ask yourself, why do I keep hitting these? You know, what can I do differently so that this doesn't continue to be a problem? Now that doesn't guarantee that every film shoot will go s entirely smoothly, of course, but I I think it does help to, um, it, it does help to kind of show what's important to you as a filmmaker, that's, that's what I, uh, that, that's kind of a, a roundabout way of thinking of this, but that, that's what I got out of the small projects that I was making during the lockdowns in 2020. And uh, so, so for me, the uh, idea of making these kind of stripped down or down and dirty movies, as I, as I referred to it, uh, it, it gave me sort of a new, a new way of, um, uh, or a renewed way, a renewed way of thinking about uh, how to make a movie that in many ways is is more similar to how I worked years ago when I very first started making short films. And uh, I, I think it's opened up a lot of, um, you know, a lot of possibilities for me. So anyway, with, with all of that in mind, I'm curious to hear uh, what, what have you been working on, you know, the, the past year, year and a half? Um, what did you make during 2020? How did you find yourself thinking differently about the films that you made? And, uh, also I'm curious what you feel that you learned from that experience. Uh, how did, how do you think that making films under the restrictions of the lockdowns or whatever, do you feel that it changed your thinking about how to make a movie more efficiently did it help you find things about the filmmaking process that you really love that maybe you had in some ways had forgotten about or had lost sight of? Uh, I'd be curious to hear what your experiences were and to hear about what you were working on. Anyway, thank you for watching. I uh, will talk to you later.